Hello and welcome to Judging by the Cover, where we'll be judging Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. By Tom Clancy, I mean by the cover. Say what you like about Tom Clancy, his books are all chest-thumping jingoist militarist fantasies, none of the games with his name on actually have any of his input anymore, he's starting to smell rather bad, but who among us can say that they personally have got their own logo? Yeah, it must have been a bitch to have to draw this whole thing out every time he needed to sign a cheque, but it is pretty magnificent. From the edgy, futuristic font reminiscent of the Red Dwarf closing credits, and the little soldier in the action man pose on the left, is that actually supposed to be Tom Clancy himself? Probably not, since he's upright and not lying in a coffin, being dead, which is what Tom Clancy is. Ghost Recon Wildlands is a Ubisoft sandbox game. I know, surprising isn't it, they've only released about 12 of those this month, they must have decided to cut back for Lent. You may remember that the last Ubisoft sandbox we did in this esteemed organ of analysis was Steep, which we eventually concluded depicted some people fleeing in terror from the wrath of the gigantic airborne sky douche, herald of the extreme sports apocalypse. And if Ubisoft are consciously trying to beat their previous record for confusing perspective, then they're succeeding at that at least. Ask yourself, viewer, what we are looking at here. Is it simply an ordinary sized redneck squatting on top of a hill to survey the terrain before him? Or is this the coming of Nazkra, the gigantic city-destroying open carry activist and occasional enemy of Godzilla? See how he squats in the centre of this huge natural valley, it being the only vessel large enough to contain his godlike beer shits. And while we're on the subject of perspective, is that his backpack? Or is someone slightly out of shot holding a walkie-talkie really, really close to the camera? One thing that supports the giant monster theory is that Nazkra seems to be looking directly at the helicopter to his immediate left which, relatively speaking, is naught but a tiny hummingbird in the presence of his magnificence. He's clearly debating whether it's time to start doing the King Kong bit and swat it out of the air, or more likely, shoot it out of the air, cause whatever King Kong's virtues, he never gave much of a shit for Second Amendment rights. But the helicopter is trying bravely to distract Nazkra by flinging out toy action figures on parachutes. But lest you think their plan futile, the helicopter isn't actually trying to distract from itself. It's trying to distract Nazkra from the game warden in the lower left, who has successfully crept close enough unnoticed to tag the monstrous beast with his tranquilizer rifle. You might not think one tranquilizer dart is going to do a whole lot, but I guess they're counting on Nazkra possessing an Achilles heel, in the strictly literal sense. Oh, but let's not get preoccupied with the wilder interpretations. The bloke in the cap isn't necessarily of giant city-destroying size. He could just be a relatively sober four or five times the size of a normal man. And he's squatting next to his sniper friend in order to helpfully point out things for him to shoot. Look, he says, there's some kind of white box on the end of a crane. Why should there be a white box on a crane? It's obviously a chemical weapon production facility. Let's blow it up and piss off for breakfast or dinner. I don't know. The sun's on the horizon, but we don't know if it's morning or evening. I looked at the giant redneck's wristwatch and that didn't help. The time of day is reportedly 24.30, so something's clearly gone wrong somewhere. He could be timing something that has thus far taken 25 minutes, which I'm guessing was deciding what guns he wanted to pack. But the answer to the giant redneck conundrum is answered by what is ostensibly an alternate cover. Take a look at the skull on this piece of modern art. It's not crafted from papier-mâché, it's a real skull, and it's about four times the size of a normal bloke's head. So I guess we've learned the ultimate fate of Nazkra. He was murdered and skinned in tribute to the Virgin Mary. We also learn that Tom Clancy's interpretation of wild land is a country with a predominantly Spanish Catholic population. The other function this cover serves is to relieve anyone who was starting to panic because a Ubisoft sandbox cover didn't depict three or four dudes with backpacks staring at a skybox. Fist Pump, announces Captain Fist Pump. We finally defeated that terrible, gigantic man. Now the world is safe. Thank God, says Sergeant Ponytail. Now I can finally unload this gun and begin a life of peace and non-violence. Ha <laughs> ha, you crack me up, Sergeant Ponytail, says the bloke on the right. Now help me sellotape another eight or nine things to this rifle.